I feel like I gotta really deliver somebody like at that level, somebody really amazing like that. I had to eat and call Celine. <laughs> oh yes, Celine Dion. <laughs> Married to René Angelil. <laughs> who is gambling away her millions right now. All right, so, so anyway, now, you know, I don't really know her, right? Like, I've met her a couple of times, but believe me, she's not my cell phone or anything. And so I made a bunch of calls, and I found out that Mark Steinis from Entertainment Tonight was going to Vegas at that moment to interview Celine and Ronnie, and he was going to interview them watching the telethon because Celine had, like, freaked out on Larry King, right? So I called Mark Steinis, and I said, Steinis, this is Kathy Griffin. I know this is a really weird message, but do you think there's any way you could get me two tickets to Celine tomorrow night and a meet and greet with her? And I went on about the auction and 6,900 bucks and Red Cross. Oh, and then I go, it's for the children, because that's my new thing. <laughs> no matter what, it's for the children. It's all about the children. All right, so anyway, he gets off the plane and he goes, okay, what's the game plan? And I said, well, first of all, distance yourself from me as much as possible. <laughs> no, because I don't know, maybe Celine has heard some of the things I've said about her on television. <laughs> you know, just, just funny jokes, really. Um, <laughs> Just things like that when she wears her white leather jumpsuit, she gets a yeast infection. Just funny. Or maybe she's heard me say in jest that her husband, René Angelil, has been raping her since she was 13. <laughs> oh, just dinner conversation, really. Observational humor. All right, so... You know, and so he's like, well, what should I say? And I go, just say it's Kathy Lee Gifford. And so, um, <laughs> and I'm doing a new Christian album, whatever. Okay, so he said, well, should I say that the auction was originally for her and not Kelly? And I said, no. I go, first of all, honesty is the best policy. Secondly, they could just catch me by going on eBay and seeing it, right? Just say that, you know, um, I'm... Kelly was only in town for one night, and that's why I chose that show. And besides, I've already seen the Celine show twice. At, and let me just say this. If you have not seen the Celine Dion Vegas show tomorrow, get a plane ticket, go to Vegas. It is the biggest freak show you will ever see, ever. You know it's Cirque du Celine. Oh yeah, it's half Cirque du Soleil, half Celine Dion. For no reason, no reason at all. And let me just say this, and I know that she stands alone. I'm the only person who feels this way. I can't stand Cirque du Soleil. I'm sorry, I can't stand it. Here's why. I don't want to see a French Canadian clown slowly roll a beach ball across the stage <laughs> for five minutes while saying, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> what is that? Is that French? Is that a joke? Ay, ay, ay. What the f Shut the f What is that? Shut up with your big shoes. I don't know what that means. And all right, I guess the contortionists are cool, right? Very impressive. They're doing stuff we can't do. But for me, once you see the gay guy bend over and bleep himself, I'm done. I'm done. All right, so it's half Cirque du Soleil, half Celine Dion for no reason. And I heard her on Oprah say that she just went to Cirque du Soleil one night, and then I turned to Rene, and I say, Rene, Someday, I am to make a show like that. <laughs> a show that is half magic, half music. And she f did, right? And I'm thinking, Renee, sometimes you have to say no. So, <laughs> no, because it makes no sense. Like, she'll be standing there singing Titanic, right? And it's beautiful and wonderful. And for no reason, a giant styrofoam piano <laughs> floats by over her head with a French-Canadian clown playing it on a harness like this. For no reason. And she doesn't look up and he doesn't look down. It makes no sense. If I could, I would teach you all the things I've never learned. Oh, and then she does this other thing. And like I said, I've seen the show several times. Every single time she walks out at the beginning of the show and it's at this huge theater in Caesars, right? Like 3,000 seats or something. It's sold out every night. Every time she walks out, she acts like she's shocked anyone showed up. Every night, it's like this. time. And 
as if every single day at about three o'clock, she's like, you know, Renee, maybe tonight is the night they do not come. I'm just excited. Okay, so, okay, the other thing, I love the banter in a big tour. Like, if you saw the Streisand tour, she did not change one syllable. No matter what happened, like, sets could be falling down. She never changed a thing. City to city, never change. Okay, so Selling says this one thing, and I've seen it every time, and it, it just gets me. I don't know if, if you'll think this is funny, but it gets me every time. She comes out, and she goes like this. Is it Okay if I come and sit with you for a moment. And everybody goes, a including me. I'm like, ah, oh, yes, come sit with me. Okay, so, because I love her. Okay, so she goes and she sits down on the front of the stage and she goes like this. This next song is for all the parents in the audience and also the children. That's just everybody, right? May I sit with you for a couple of minutes? Is that all right? May I? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, as I sit here, if I may, I would love to dedicate this next song to all the parents and children of the world. She says, oh no, one of your stories. I don't know if I want to hear one of your stories. All right. So anyway, sure enough, I'm in Savannah. The middle of the night, I get a call from a woman at the Celine Dion show. She says, yes, you can have two tickets to tomorrow night. And Celine will meet you in the auction winner for a picture. So I'm over the moon. All right, the next day I fly to Vegas. I have lunch with the gays. I said, that's it. I scored two tickets. I'm in. All the boys are there. And then my gay Steve gives me the gay sigh. <gasps> I go, what? And he goes, I love her. I go, I know you love her. You're gay. She's Celine Dion. And then he goes, well, can I have a ticket to you? I go, oh, I'm so not pushing it. And then I said, but they did say, like, I could have her sign something. Okay, so Steve and his boyfriend, Kyle, go to the Le Shop du Céline. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a whole Céline store at Caesars, an entire store of just Céline crap, right? So it's like the CDs and the calendars and the posters, Céline T-shirts, Céline trucker cap, everything Céline. <laughs> so... They come back to my hotel room with this heaping shopping bag of crap for her to sign, right? So I'm like, Steve, and he goes, huh? I'm like, okay, don't give me the sign. Fine, I'll do it. All right, so then Mike and I go to Caesars, and we go backstage, it's time for the meet and greet. And let me just say this. I've been in many, many theaters. Some are beautiful like this one, some are holes. I have never seen anything as fancy as backstage at the Celine Dion Theater. The waiting room, right where you wait for her, is like cover of Architectural Digest. It was so fancy, I started to sweat. <laughs> so, okay, so then I decide I wanna really have everything in order for when she arrives. So I take everything out of the shopping bag, one thing after another, and I line it all up on this table next to her couch. So we're waiting for her to come in. The show starts at 8.30, she comes in at 8.27. Yeah, she's not wasting time on me, right? So I'm really nervous, and I just go like this, oh, Celine! So she puts her hand out, and she goes like this, hello, how are you? Kind of cold, right? So I just panic, and I throw my arms around her, like we're old friends. And then I start talking really fast, because I'm a wreck, and I'm going, um, this is Mike, and he's the auction winner, and, um, you know, it, it goes for uh, the Red Cross, and $6,900, Celine, and it's for the children. And also, it's important <laughs> that you... And I go, well, you probably know the whole backstory. And then she says... Oh no, one of your stories. I don't know if I want to hear one of your stories. <laughs> I know. Okay, so at that moment, I just turned into my mother and act like it didn't happen. <laughs> I 
was just kept talking like everything was great. And she was absolutely lovely. So she sits down and she signs this big, beautiful program for Mike and she gives it to him. And then I look over and I see all the crap from Steve and Kyle. <laughs> on and on and on, right? So I'm thinking, okay, this is way too much. So I hand her a CD, and then while she's signing it, I just shove everything behind my back, back into the shopping bag, and she catches me. So she turns around and she goes, you have more you want me to sign? And I was like, oh, um, it's just, it's Steve, and he you know the gays, it's really a lot. Oh, and I didn't tell you this, Kyle put post-its on everything of what he wanted her to write. <laughs> enough that she would just write Celine. Oh no, every item had like, Dear Kyle, I love you because you loved me, Celine Dion. <laughs> Dear Kyle, our hearts will go on, Celine Dion. <laughs> so I know, so I'm just like, oh, it's, it's really too much. And then she says, that is okay, that is what I'm here for. So I hand her one thing after another, and one of the post-its said, because um, Kyle's a teacher, and it said, keep on teaching. It says something like, dear Kyle, keep on teaching. So then she goes, is he a music teacher? And I said, uh-huh, he's a history teacher. Um, <laughs> so I have to tell you, she sat there and signed every single thing I had. She was so lovely and so sweet. And so, so sweet. Okay, so she signs everything and she goes, okay, now we take the picture. So then we stand up. And so she stands there and she's gorgeous, right? She's like six feet tall. She's got the long extensions, red corset dress, right? So we're now we're posing for the picture. So I'm over here, she's in the middle, and then Mike the auction winner is over here. And now there's three cameras. So there's Mike's Instamatic, which is fine, her professional camera, and then Steve's camera that he threw in the shopping bag because he had to have his own picture. So, so we're posing, right? And we're smiling, and we're posing, and over here, and over here. You guys, I don't have an explanation for what happened next. I can just say that I'm a big dork and I was nervous and I don't know why. I realized about halfway through the posing, I was petting her hair. <laughs> right? And then my hand to God without missing a beat, she goes, whoop, whoop, then I will bark like dog for you. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> she barked. Whoop, 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 whoop. She barked. 